Hello and welcome to Basel Tov, the courage and creativity of ADHD. I'm Jen. I'm Ellen. And I'm Annette. And today we have a topic that we've mentioned offhand several times during the course of all the rest of the episodes we've posted. Um, it's unmasking, the concept of unmasking your condition. So what is that for people who have never heard the term unmasking? It's the idea that when you have some kind of disability, you go out in the world and try to mask its existence, to hide it away from everybody else. Because the the general thought is that the disability itself is unacceptable or a burden on others or something like that. And um, when you unmask, you basically take the shame and stigma away from the condition by not hiding it. And then you normalize its existence within the world so that other people have to realize, yes, this is a thing in life. It exists. It's not a farce. Like some people love to say about ADHD in the first place. In fact, this week we just got some of our first hate mail when somebody told us that <laughs> ADHD is like um, oh God, what what did they say it was? I'm trying to remember the exact thing. It's a it was doc like doctor's prescription for laziness. A doctor's note for yeah. laziness. Yeah. Basically a doctor's note for lazy people is mm -hmm. is what it was. Um and so okay, we, first we off just no. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little bit. I actually I haven't gone back to see back, if there though. was I don't think I don't they wrote think back. So. No. Yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah, I posted a, a quick little thing and just, you know, bye. <laughs> well, kind of I think, I think unmasking it. is a good thing because it's good to normalize ADHD. It's good for everyone to know, like, there's a lot of people that have this and we're tired of faking it all the time and just going mm -hmm. with the, the neurotypical flow of the world all the time without, you know, and it's, it's exhausting trying to fit in yeah. to... Yeah, uh, the systems that are in place. And so I feel like for me, and I mean, I'm sure we're going to go into the like more scientific details or whatever you have in that. But um, <laughs> for me, I feel like I'm masking. It's really been about just getting to know myself and uh, kind of mm, just understanding what parts of me are the ADHD. And then like, like you were saying, Jen, taking the shame out of it and I've been more open with people about it. You know, if I do something that's very blatantly my ADHD, sometimes I will even mention it to people like, oh, I, I that's my ADHD brain right there, you know, just to kind of put it out there. You know, I don't want to hide it. I, I don't want to flaunt it around. Everybody look at me. I got ADHD, but, you know, I think it's good to normalize it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I that's so. that's really what the spirit is behind it is normalizing it. Um, because pretty much anybody who has ADHD knows that it's not a walk in the park to try to get a diagnosis in the first place. There are lots no. of things that have to happen. Um, first of all, you have to have a mental health care professional take you seriously if you're a woman. Um, <laughs> because be they're, yeah, which can be pretty tough, um, Men and boys don't have the same kind of trouble in that arena, but they still might have to go from counselor to counselor before they find somebody they're comfortable with or that they feel comfortable with. So, you know, that's still a thing for them. And yeah, yeah it just it can spiral from there. You have to involve teachers, potentially. You might have to involve a co-parent. You might have to involve um, your own husband or wife <laughs> or whatever the case may be, um, to basically bolster your side of the story about your symptoms. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. not, not easy. And then getting medicated is even harder because they make you, um, go through different kinds of therapy sometimes for some up to a whole year. That was, that was what happened to me. They had me test out different therapies for a whole year to see if I could just tough out the symptoms or learn um, appropriate coping mechanisms um, within that time frame. So I had to prove 
that my ADHD was bad enough that it couldn't survive all those therapies <laughs> or that it, but, that it would survive. But masking in and of itself is a coping mechanism. And that is what it is by mm -hmm. definition. Masking mm -hmm. yeah. by definition is pretending to be neurotypical when you are neurodivergent. It is trying <laughs> to exist in a neurotypical world and try to match the behaviors of everybody else <laughs> around you to make it so that you don't stand out. And uh, typically the reason why men tend to get diagnosed more commonly than women is because women mask more than men do. And part of the reason for that is how we are taught to interact with society from the beginning of our lives. Women are taught that we are in a group and we have to work with others and we have to we have different social rules that we have to abide by and to fit into social cliques, you have to adjust your behavior to fit in. And we're taught that from a very young age. Men are more of a hierarchy and they have a hierarchical structure. So they don't have to mask as much. They are more individual. They are more willing to show exactly who they are and what their personality is because yeah. they don't get judged the same way as women do. And we're taught that from the beginning of our lives. So people, women with ADHD, not only do women mask more than men anyway in our daily lives, but we have to put on an extra mask because now we're trying to pretend that we are fine and we are functional when we're not. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And I think the pressure intensifies after you have children, because in order for your kids to have friends, you have to befriend the parents of the other kids. So then if you haven't, yeah, so, right, I know, which is, that can be, that can be a real peach of a chore there. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it does have implications for your kids, even if you fail the task of masking appropriately, which apparently I did because, um, you know, I'm medicated all these years later. <laughs> but... Oh, there was just a story on Reddit the other day about that in the ADHD women sub, somebody said they unmasked for the first time in front of like a new kind of mom friend group. They were all hanging out with their kids and they said mm -hmm. that they, they ended up kind of, um, hype, like talking about one of their hyper focuses you know one of their interests and they were just like word vomit <laughs> like going overboard explaining this in such great detail because they're so passionate about it and they mm -hmm. they said that the, the other moms were kind of looking at her, at her like oh okay you know like yeah and she uh, was like i uh, took the mask off and regretted it but yep. oh, <laughs> that my sucks. life yeah 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 it yeah. happens to me yeah. all the fucking time so mm. like <laughs> I'm a musician oh, no. and yeah. it's it's one of my things with ADHD I tend to be an impulsive talker okay so yeah. that is my that is one of my biggest issues with ADHD is I can't shut up and if I get into a situation where I have anxiety it gets worse <laughs> oh no <laughs> So why does our brain oh do that? God. I don't know, but I walk into a room and it's like I'm like, okay, be cool, dude. Be cool. Yeah. Don't talk. Just shut mm -hmm. up. Just smile, smile, smile. Then somebody asks me a question, and I'm like, oh yeah, da -da -da -da. and then I go off on something, and then I start panicking because I'm like, oh god, I'm going off on something, and then like I try to like change the subject or ask them a question, and then it's like. Oh, it's just derailed and all <laughs> fucked up. And then I walk out Too going, late. God damn it. Hmm. So you've been there. Yeah. Oh. The mask comes off and then you put your foot in your mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Yep. Yeah. It's hard. To, it's hard to just be yourself sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, because being yourself is really an awkward human being. So but we love you. Right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Is, isn't it really fucking funny how, um, how neurotypical people all talk about like, be yourself. Yay. Yeah. Go yeah. you. And then, <laughs> and 
you don't really want we, that from us <laughs> we, no no they don't really want that it's like lip service so that they feel like they get to be however they want and then you know other people just have to deal with that but then they don't want to deal with other people when they're weird yeah i'm sorry <laughs> be yourself oh i'm sorry you're weird i don't want to hang out with you anymore <laughs> right <laughs> I mean, I think that there's a, a balance to it, you know, obviously, like, you don't want to hurt other people with your unmasking, you know, like, I mean, mm -hmm. it's tough, though, because when you unmask, sometimes that can be really inconvenient for other people, but it's just what you need. And so it's hard mm -hmm. to ask for that, you know, it's hard, like, uh, like, um, you know, if you're at work and someone, let's say someone tells you some verbal instructions and you are just, you won't remember that. You have to have instructions written down. It might be really embarrassing to like ask your boss, like, sorry, can you tell me that again? Or can I have that in writing? You know, but it's like, if you need that, you just, you just got to do it. And oh, so, see, you know what I'm saying? I have, I've become a ninja with that kind of <laughs> shit because, yeah. because I need things in a certain way. And so I will always frame it in a way that it's not like, oh, my brain is like this and so could yeah. you do this i'm always like okay i totally heard what you said and just for future reference just so i don't mess this up could you possibly yeah. put that in writing for me so that this doesn't become a problem in the future yeah like, that's good mm -hmm. so there's polite yeah. ways to ask yeah. for things yeah yeah i mean yeah, I without could... showing mm -hmm. without showing like your weakness like i've, I've yeah i yeah. live in japan <laughs> showing you, weakness sounds like a very japanese thing like mm -hmm. yeah do not show weakness yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> you do not admit when you're sick oh, you uh yeah. do not admit when you have a mental illness when you are stressed mm -hmm. when you're tired you just look and you say i'm fine thank you thank oh, this uh, this <sighs> yeah uh, we're, we're not, not fine yeah we're not yeah. fine all the time no but it's like japanese people are like we talk about masking in a way that uh is neurodivergent but it's like i feel like this whole society just kind of has a mask and you mm. don't know mm. who's behind that mask and mm -hmm. you find this in a lot of situations because they'll, they'll like pop up that mask and they're like yes 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 and you get to know them and the mask comes off and you're like oh god that's interesting. <laughs> you know, wow. one of the things I really like about living in the Midwest uh, of the United States, I, you know, I moved out here about six years ago, lived in on the West Coast most of my life, but I just love how a lot of the people here are very genuine. They're very honest and kind and friendly. And so I love that vibe. I feel like most, you know, strangers you talk to that you have a friendly conversation with, they're just being themselves. And there's not a ton of like masking in that regard going on here. So I like that. It's more down to earth, I guess. Like, you know, people are just living their lives, not really caring too much about what other people do. And uh, I feel like in other cultures, there's just more certain cities, there's more pressure to kind of fit in or be a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, well, every every in, place we're always masking. <laughs> in Japan, there is a Japanese proverb that says, "The nail that's sticking up gets the hammer." What's the, so? That means oh, don't stand out. That's ugly. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying yeah. to like bash their culture or anything right now, but that's like, ooh, that sounds uh, coming from an American standpoint, and like, you know, it's thinking like, the way that we help? think. It just ah, just no. <laughs> but on the on the opposite side of that, this society is very safe. They work yeah. together. They work for the good of everybody mm -hmm. else. It's a very uh, community driven society. And so, no, yes, the individual has to die in a way, you know. Yeah. And that's a lot of what what that masking is is that mm. you you do not exist for your own self you exist as part of a community That's and so, so if you complain about something you're bringing down the entire community so don't complain put your head to the stone and do what you're supposed to do wow you have okay. obligations do what you got to do and so okay. i find it very stressful because yeah. i have i have like double masking going on because i have to mask 
as an American who is taught to be very, you know, individualistic and independent, right? I have to mask that to fit into society here. And then I also have to mask all of my uh, ADHD symptoms as much as I possibly can, because I mean, a yeah. lot of the things that you think about with ADHD, like the impulsiveness and things, that goes directly against what J Japanese society is. Mm. And mm -hmm. so it's like, yeah. I have to really double mask and it's exhausting because masking is exhausting. It is. It's emotionally it is, yeah. exhausting. It's so That's hard. That's probably why I, I, I like... I like to talk to other people and I am social to a degree, but like most of the time I just feel like, oh, I have, I don't know if I have enough energy to go out or to have people over or whatever, like <laughs> right. kind of hang out like an introvert in, in my house. So like, yeah, the I people guess that you want to spend... I'm introverted, but I mean, hmm? true, but like the people you spend your time with are probably people you feel like you don't mask with. You can just be yourself, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's, you know, as, as much as like getting to know yourself by masking is a good thing. I mean, it can also be a bad thing. Like there's certain situations where you get, I, I would not advise taking off your mask. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain settings where you kind of have to be more vigilant about it because again, you are, part of a society. And I think that's, mm, yeah. I think that's the part where I living in Japan has really shown me that. And then it's like, you know, it's, it's great to advocate for yourself. You should, but also you're, you're a part of a larger community. And yeah, so, you have, you have yeah. responsibilities beyond yourself too. I mean, it's sort I guess, you know, yeah. yeah, in a society. Yeah. And, and I personally feel like it's good for us to look out for other people, you know, mm -hmm. do unto others, whatever that Bible verse is. It's good shit. <laughs> yeah, do unto others as you want yeah. done to you. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? That sounds great. So I, I, I can see how somebody might take unmasking and take it too far, you know, and just be rude to people all the time. And they're like, well, that's just the way I am. I'm ADHD. I forget things. That's just the way I am. Deal with it. You know? So it's like, don't use unmasking like that. Don't use it as an excuse, but you know, use it as a, as knowledge and a, and a tool and, uh, you know, a way for people to get to know you better, the real authentic you, because we all want real connections in our life. And you can't have those if you're putting on a mask with someone, you're not going to connect with them mm -hmm. the same way as if you were just yourself. So that's true. Yeah, that's it's a true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A it mask, really is. No, but be discerning about it. Like you were saying, and that like, <laughs> you know, there's certain situations, I, I can't even think of a good example. Can you guys think of a good example? funerals oh yeah just do <laughs> That's a really good one i'm sorry if you need to stim or something or you're being <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah if you're, if you're yeah. gonna bother a bunch of people you know just do do no harm you know first do no harm back. yeah yeah yep. do right make accommodations for yourself like if you're going somewhere and you're like I'm going to get really bored. And if I start like shaking my leg in the middle of this funeral, it's going to annoy everyone. Yeah. Sit in the back row. <laughs> oh man. No, oh, I used yourself. to get distracted in, in funerals. Like I've been to funerals where I got distracted and then got something funny in my head and started laughing in the middle oh, of it. God. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's probably ADHD uh, intrusive yeah. thoughts right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously yeah, gotta, intrusive thoughts, and then I just that couldn't mask on even. Tight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just I've never been good at masking, life. though, so I just got in trouble. <laughs> oh, I know. That's what happens when you unmask when you're a kid, is you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but even uh, I told you guys in the, in the chat, but like I just did a show for uh, the Latin America, uh, a car company, a very famous car company. Uh, and uh, I did a, a party for them and I was singing and I met uh, some of the like the CEOs and uh, like and oh, yeah yeah some of the executives uh -huh. yeah. and so mm -hmm. they were talking to me but they're, what they're talking about was not very interesting 
<laughs> and so I totally like in front of their face, like disassociated and start thinking about other things. And so like my face went dead and like oh. one of the executives is like, are you okay? You look a little sick. And I was like, oh, oh shit. My God. That's hilarious. Oh, they, caught no. you. they caught you in outer like, space. Yeah. No, I'm oh. fine. I'm just a little tired. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> just, you're just yeah. boring and my brain can't handle this conversation right now, but got to mask it. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. If we if we truly unmasked, that would be it, life would be hard. <laughs> you got you got to hold it together somehow. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a there's a difference between, you know, unmasking and then just, you know, having all of your symptoms like balls out on the table for everybody, yeah, actually, you know, that's a good point. There's a difference. Yeah. Like there, I think there is totally a difference between that. Like unmasking to me means I'm still going to make an effort to mm -hmm. like learn and do the things I'm supposed to do in a timely manner. I'm still going to try to function the best way that I can because it's good for everybody, yeah. but, including myself. But at the same time, I might make mistakes and, you know, that's just what I'm asking other people to be aware of if I'm unmasking is, hey, if I make mistakes, you know, I'll, I'll try to, you know, fix it in some way. I'm taking responsibility and or accountability for it right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I mean, those mistakes might always happen, you know. Uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm all, I'm probably always going to be a clumsy person. And when I'm, you know, at a bakery working in the kitchen, I'm probably always going to be dropping eggs or bumping things over. And if mm. I apologize and say, I won't let it happen again, I, I can't make that promise. You know, I gotta... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to me, unmasking yeah. is just being real with myself and embracing who I am. And it's like, it's okay. It, it might take me a little longer to get things done because I'm not the most organized and I'm a little messy, but I'm just going to do what I need to do to make up for that. Work a little extra if I have to, or, you know, mm. just figure it out from there. But I think unmasking to me is just embracing myself the way I am of course, trying to make improvements, but like at a certain point, mm -hmm. depending on how old you are, especially you just, you just are like, this is how, who I am. This is the way I am. Yeah. I'm never going to be a perfect human being. I can improve some things, yeah. but you know, we're, we're wired a certain way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but also that's just me that's just me being stubborn and apathetic apathetic about about uh improving too because i'm lazy <laughs> yeah. uh. so if i'm being if i'm being real honest here you know yeah i'm not sure i can be called lazy like i've kind of flip-flopped on this because like of course i've been called that by abusive people so mm -hmm. there's the tendency to be like am I lazy? You're not you know, a lazy like, <laughs> like, is that what's going on here? But, um, I, if I look at things objectively and how hard I've had to work to get where I'm at, I don't know if I can legitimately be called lazy. I know. And you know what? I shouldn't call myself lazy. I take that back. <laughs> Even though I can display some <laughs> traits of laziness at times but you know we don't want to put ourselves in a box <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't or, think, I mean I don't, I don't know if you anybody, are lazy yeah mm. Mm. I, I I think you 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 just have a uh more laid-back approach to life <laughs> yeah yeah honestly yeah. that's part of it I don't like yeah. a lot of activity you know I I that's just I prefer that to have a little more low <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't That's think fine. anybody has ever accused me of being lazy so no 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 my no. problem isn't lazy uh, like any perception of lazy mine is just uh i'm clumsy same as mm -hmm. you uh and i'm impulsive mm -hmm. and i'm uh confused i guess <laughs> 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 I just like I'll start something and then start something else and then I'm like wait what was I doing and it's like I feel absent-minded a yeah. lot scatterbrained yeah scatterbrained yeah. Yes. yes yeah 
Yeah. I feel that too. It's like you walk into a room. Wait, what was I doing? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of that. Oh, I do that all the time. I'm like, why did I come in here? Or I'll like yep. come up, go upstairs to grab something. And then I mm. grab something else and go back downstairs. And then I'm like, hell, I forgot uh, that thing. And like, I forgot the phone charger yep. or whatever and it is. Oh, I yeah. know. If I'm going to go do a gig in Tokyo, I'm going to forget at least one thing every time. <laughs> I have oh, never man. had a perfect, like, oh, a perfect pack. I've never had it. Like, it never <laughs> happens. There's always something that's missing. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, that's so frustrating. I'm sorry. Yeah. <sighs> oh, so frustrating. And that's, that's, I think that can be one of the, like, some of the frustration. <laughs> a sign to just admitting that you have ADHD to other people in the first place and, and feeling comfortable with unmasking because mm -hmm. of the fear that they're going to go back and be like, Oh, so that's why they're like this and this and this and this and that, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you feel called out. <laughs> well, I think it helps. It, I, I don't know. In some ways I think it helps people kind of understand you too when you like i remember after i got diagnosed i told a bunch of people and they were like oh okay that makes, that sense. makes sense yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so when people know that you have adhd i know not everyone's comfortable sharing that with other people but you know i would really encourage you to if you feel like it's a safe person to share with you know because mm -hmm. it's, it's good to normalize this it's good for people to know that we exist out there because as we were saying, there are a lot of people out there. There are trolls that don't understand what ADHD is and because yeah. they themselves don't have it. And so they probably just can't imagine what it's really like. Either that or they do have it and they're like extra <laughs> militant about masking. Yeah, yeah, they're in denial. <laughs> That's why they hate in it. Complete denial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I've had it hard too. I just pulled up my bootstraps and, and you should do the same. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, if maybe only not. Yeah. I mean, I, it kind of kills me when people do stuff like this, like the whole bootstrapping and it's like, well, how far are you going to take that? Are you going to go have a root canal without anesthesia? <laughs> because you, uh, how tough you wanna, are you? Know, you? Bootstrap it. You're super tough. You've survived things. You can survive this root canal just completely unanesthetized go for it mm -hmm. like <laughs> well i mean some people don't want to do that and i think that yeah. it's ludicrous to expect every single person to want to go through a day that's the equivalent of having an unanesthetized root canal like <laughs> yeah just no <laughs> no 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 the so... medication's better <laughs> I think we've probably, we probably know people that I would, con like, you could say that person is unmasked, you know, they're very open about who they are and their neurodivergence mm -hmm. and everything. And sometimes those people can get really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest here, you know, I, so <laughs> I totally did not think that's where that was going. <laughs> I know. No, but, but I feel the same. <laughs> So that's what it's, it's true. We have, to, we, have to, we have to be careful when we unmask because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a balance. Yeah. You don't want to piss off your friends too much, <laughs> but you don't want to wind up with an inordinate amount of kitten pictures that are like, you know, <laughs> clinging to the branch and inspirational yeah, yeah, yeah. thoughts and hang in all there, that. baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you don't want to collect like too many of those. Like, I want people to be themselves. I want them to feel comfortable being themselves. But also, like, like we were saying, like, accountability is important, too, and responsibility and, and being a team player with other humans that you yeah. connect with, you know? So I don't, I don't think it's great to just say, I'm going to unmask and just be myself and fuck everybody, you know? Yeah, I, I feel the same way, but I'm just because of the uh emotional and sometimes physical uh tax that masking takes yeah i think that you have to if you can because there are some people who have adhd that they cannot think through oh is this a situation i should mask or 
is this not? I mean, there are some people, especially if you have ADHD that's mixed with a little dash of autism, as some of us do have. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you don't have the ability to really be able to read the social cues. Um, people with ADHD tend to be really good at reading micro expressions and going, oh shit, I went too far. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's really hard to reel it back in once we've, you know, let the cat out of the bag. But, uh, <laughs> those of us who have ADHD and autism at the same time are missing those social cues. Mm -hmm. And so the, the people who are, who tend to be out there and unmasked te tend to, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, I think those more typically the autistic type because they mm. don't, they don't, they just, they can't read the same social cues. And so it doesn't matter to them if they're really, how the other people are responding to them in some ways. Mm. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. But like, I mean, probably some of this because um, ADHD is only part, it's part of the component of autism. So technically, I think all, don't all autistic people also have ADHD? Like, no. no? Oh, I was told that it's a, a component of that diagnosis. No, it's, no, it's not. It's a very, it's separate diagnosis. Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay. That's why you can have ADHD with autism. Um, it's a separate diagnosis, but it tends to be mm. run in the same group. So many people who have ADHD. autism will also have ADHD, but it's not part mm -hmm. of the same uh, diagnosis. People with, who, right. Many people who have ADHD are not at all on the autism spectrum. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. It doesn't go. I didn't think that it went both ways like that, where, you know, you're on the autism spectrum. If you have ADHD, it's just, it doesn't um, go the other I, way either. It yeah, just, it, no. they okay. tend to be a comorbidity. Okay. okay. I, I hear you. All right. Thanks for, for <laughs> getting, getting me around to that point. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Like my sister, my sister is one of those who have uh, autism and ADHD. Oh together. boy. Yeah. And Fun. so, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so she, she tends to have that, but there is, there's lots of people on the autistic spectrum that do not have ADHD. Um, okay. Yeah. It, it just tends to be a comorbidity, but it's, it is a permanent, like predominant mm -hmm. uh, comorbidity. It's very, it's yeah. more common than it's not. Mm -hmm. I do know that people who have um, CPS, CPTSD, have um like basically the way that the PTSD symptoms and the ADHD symptoms interlace it's almost indistinguishable from autism and ADHD wow um, really yeah yeah cuz i i asked um a a couple of therapists and, and got the that general reaction um that cuz i was like am i is it possible that i could be autistic um because i was having so many extra things. And they said, because I had CPTSD and combined type ADHD, it was going to be downright impossible for them to try to figure out which was which. So they just had mm -hmm. me keep the CPTSD because that was founded in recorded abuse. Mm -hmm. So like that, that was something that they knew I would have regardless. And if I have autism, I'm not sure if like if that would even be treated differently or not, to be honest. Well, but. here's the interesting thing about that is because there are some uh, like uh, memory function uh, signs that are mm -hmm. uh, definitely autism and information processing that you can look at, at to show, show, okay, this is autism. Because my sister also has uh, PTSD. So okay she has all three she is the magic mushroom Ugh. of human beings man yeah. holy yes. crap <laughs> and, uh, yeah. i do not envy yeah at, I some, do point, not at envy. some point i want to drag her on here and to be a guest on the show to oh, uh, yeah. yes. talk about that because you know she has she has a lot of, of different things that express into how she lives her life and experiences her life with adhd yeah. And so it really does inform that area of ADHD and how she <laughs> relates to it, where I can't relate to that. 
And so, yeah. but there are information processing things that you can look at and go, okay, well, that is definitely PTSD would not do that to you. This is actually how your brain is, is functioning and processing information that shows more mm. of the autistic side. So you can separate out mm. through that. Interesting. Okay. Huh. All right. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, based off of symptoms, if you have a uh, uh, CPTSD and also ADHD, a lot of the symptoms of both of them coming together could give you some of the similar symptoms of autism. And it depends mm -hmm. on how far on the, an autistic scale somebody is, because there's lots of people who are uh, borderline autistic who function mm -hmm. perfectly fine in society. And, yeah. you know, so it really does depend on uh, the severity of it for you. But PTSD yeah. would definitely not give you some of the more uh, standing out, sim uh, you know, uh, symptoms of autism. Oh, sure. okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they did maybe they just didn't entertain it because they didn't think that that was at play. And they were just mm. like, "Oh, no, we don't have to." Like maybe that was their way of that's saying, "No, I possible. don't think so." Yeah, that's entirely yeah. possible. Yeah. I asked my psychiatrist if she thought I had any autism in me. I was like, "What do you think? Do I got any of the spice?" <laughs> she was like, <laughs> "No, I don't think so." <laughs> <laughs> any of the spice. Yeah. Okay. It is autism is definitely a different spice. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I work with a lot of autistic kids, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. I see it in your classroom. Yeah. I see it in my classroom. I see it in the kindergarten. You know, I deal with lots mm -hmm. of autistic kids and I'm, you know, I'm trained to deal yeah. with, you know, neuro spicy children, mm -hmm. adults. Yeah. I've studied adults, but not to the point that I've, I've studied to deal with children. You know, because mm -hmm. yeah. my, my focus was child psychology. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, it's definitely a different spice. I can, I will be able to spot an autistic kid from an ADHD kid almost immediately mm. just <laughs> based on their behaviors. Ah, okay. So what kind of stuff do you think we can do with kids to help teach them about unmasking in like a healthy way? You That's know? a really good question because that is a good question. Yeah, kids who are neurodivergent, you know, <laughs> they're still having all of the symptoms. I think one of the greatest things, the har it's harder to teach. Uh, the more on the autistic scale you are, the harder it is to teach the social cues. If you're dealing with a kid who has ADHD, I think one of the most important skills that you could teach them is empathy. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. um, the more empathetic a child is, the more they will be able to read situations, take into account. They'll look more uh, internally into their behaviors and uh, how it affects other people. And they'll, mm -hmm. I think, naturally the, through that, you know, empathy, they learn to, okay, this is a this is a place where I can do this. And this is a place where I can't do this. And so I think empathy yeah. is really important. I think um, teaching uh, coping mechanisms to children is really important. Uh, if you have a kid who has hyperactive ADHD, giving them an outlet or advocating for, to their school or uh, that they have an outlet. But the kid, child, you can't just put it on the teachers. You have to, you know, really teach your child, yes. I know you, you have this thing, here is your outlet, do it, mm -hmm. do it like this, you know, do this or, mm -hmm. okay, you, uh, for me, I couldn't, I cannot just listen to somebody. So in school, I would draw pictures while I was listening to the teacher. I heard everything she was saying, but if I had put that away, if I wasn't drawing a picture, then I wouldn't be able to hear a process, a single thing she said. Mm -hmm. And so having your kid understand, like, you know, and having a balance between it being a hyper focus and something they're doing is a coping mechanism, you know, <laughs> and you, as a parent, you just kind of have to watch them and kind of guide them in that. Mm -hmm. And they'll learn, to, they'll yeah. learn to see it for themselves. Yeah. But, Cause I don't, I don't want, you know, my kids, I, I don't want them to feel like they have to mask who they are as they grow up, you know, no. like, but, but yeah so it's like how do we approach this empathy I like the, yeah I, I really 
That's a really good point. I mean, honestly, that's kind of what it boils ga- down to. It's like, if you want to unmask, great, you should, but just have empathy for other people. Yeah. Think about yeah. that when you're, when you're doing your, when you're doing your unmasking thing and you're just being your, your crazy self, do it, but mm-hmm. just make sure that you're thinking about that other person's perspective. How are they receiving what you're doing right now? You know? Yeah. 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 And learning. Exactly. And learning where you can mask, uh, where you should mask and who you can unmask with. I yeah. think there are safe people who yep. you can unmask with. And then there are people where you definitely still need to, you know, rein it in a little bit. And mm-hmm. that's just part of living in a society. You know, we are near, we're not neurotypical, we're neurodivergent, but we still mm-hmm. exist within a society. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. if we were, if we were really going to be honest and unmasked, if the, the the cashier at the grocery store, when they ask us how we're doing, then we would be, we, we, we could just tell them, you know, whatever, you know, whatever was going on that day, we would just have word vomit coming out. So yeah, it's like, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Just remember you're in society and there are a few rules that are good to play so that everybody's fine. And I do think mm-hmm. it's, I do yeah. think it's important to uh, approach the idea that, you know, ADHD coming out, like it, it being a really well-known diagnosis is still kind of new. And with every social movement, with every social step that happens with uh, gay rights, with transgender Mm -hmm. rights, with, you know, interracial marriages, even, you know, Mm -hmm. every step that takes, it's like, you almost have to, the society almost over presents itself in Mm -hmm. a, like, in your face kind of way, like, look, deal with it, deal with it, deal with it. I mean, the the same thing happened with mm-hmm. gay marriage, like uh, gay rights and gay marriage. And it's like, you know, it has to be in society's face in such a bold way for people to you know, be forced is, to look at it. That is such a good point. Yes. With that movement, it was like, we're here, we're queer, we exist. Acknowledge Get used us. to it. Get used to it. Exactly. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, us with ADHD, we're kind of like, you know, we exist please uh, yeah. acknowledge that this is a real disorder here and we're dealing with it. And yeah, bringing I mean, away there's it, it, 80 and neurotypical people, by the way, um, have a higher incidence of, of being in the LGBTQ community as well. So like people, no, neurodivergent. Uh, neuro, I'm sorry. Neuro, did I say okay. neurotypical? You said neurotypical. I did. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> we're just, okay. You were about to blow Whatever. my mind with that fact. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. No, neuro, sorry. Neurodivergent people are more likely to be a member of the LGBTQ community in some fashion or another. So um, happy Pride Month, by the way. Yes. Yeah, since happy Pride Month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, since it's the beginning of the, of the month here and everybody's mm-hmm. just about to start all the festivities. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we're yeah, celebrating right. love, and That's love right. is yes. love. Mm-hmm. So love yourself and unmask. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously, have, have, empathy for your, have empathy for yourself because masking is hard, and it's not yeah. good for you long term either. I think it's like no, it's like, drink, it's like drinking a poison all the time. It's just going to make you sick, and you're gonna yeah. you're gonna end up presenting who, you know who you present yourself as to other people. You have to feel you feel like you have to keep up that facade, you know, with certain people, mm-hmm. and that's exhausting. It is. I think that's a facet of of our reality as neurodivergent people that the LGBTQ community, whether they're neurotypical or not, they yeah. could probably relate with that. Like, yeah, you know just having to hide pieces yes. of who they are big pieces of who they yes. are um yeah not you trying know. to compare our struggles to their struggles nope. of course yeah no but, it's but. not a comparison but no, it no, is no, no. a it's more of an empathizing like hey you know i think mm-hmm. on our level we can understand it and on their level they can understand it so you know yeah you can pretend to be a different person and because mm-hmm. you can pretend to be who what you think society wants you to be but if that's not who you are that's 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 gonna hurt you yeah it's <laughs> yeah you yeah, can it's just gonna crumble as a you. human being you'll, yeah. you'll be more prone to depression you yeah. know masking masking mm-hmm. is 
one of the causes of depression for people who have ADHD. And you is hear one about, of the sources. I mean, people that write suicide notes, I feel like a lot of them just kind of felt like they built up this whole facade that it was just crumbling. They couldn't keep it up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. It's good sometimes to sometimes it is yeah, yeah. Like be real and honest with how you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, that's a, like it's nice it's a nice thought. Like, yeah. oh, what if you could just be yourself totally? Mm -hmm. A refreshing idea, right? But is like, that actually possible for any human? Like a neurotypical no. neurodivergent. Can you actually just be yourself? Is that a thing? No. I don't think it's possible. Um, I don't know. I might argue that it is because I feel like I am unmasked more than a lot of people are. Mm. Just if you, if I don't you know. I just I kind of <laughs> present myself out there, or at least that's how it seems to me. And maybe I'm in complete denial about that. But like, <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I feel, feel like, like it's possible. Live, I feel like you live pretty authentically. You know. Oh, thanks. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not. You're not faking it. Um, oh, I try I'm not a faker to. all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You're kicking ass. I think it just well, feels like that. <laughs> no, I have a mask I wear because I own a business and I have to deal with people. And yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Mm, we have we have fair. so many masks that we wear for different situations at our job, yeah. at wherever. Yeah. Whatever situation yeah. it's in. It's like, oh, got to act a certain way because I'm in this situation right now, you know? Yeah. That's True. Why, True. That's why I asked that because I don't feel like there is a a possibility ever of me just free leaving who, the the awkward person that I am. You and know? it's like, would we want that for ourselves? Do we? I mean, I don't think I'd want to just be my <laughs> my core self or not core self. What am I trying to say? You know. I don't know. I feel like I have to mask sometimes to like just get through life and get things done or else you're just, you know, at least from my perspective, inattentive type tending towards being a little more inactive. Sometimes you have to put on that mask and just do it. Just get up and go fake it mm -hmm. if you have to. But you have things that you need to do because you have responsibilities. Right. And so if I didn't mask ever, then I might have a rough time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want that. Yeah. Yeah. It's maybe I've hard. just, maybe I can't tell what, what the mask is anymore. <laughs> but like, I know. I, there's, Thank there's you. a lot of people like if you're fidget, if you, you're prone to fidgeting, uh, mm -hmm. like you cross your arms in front of your body so that like you try not to fidget, mm -hmm. that's masking. Uh, mm -hmm. You park your, okay. your car is an absolute mess and you're totally embarrassed by it. So you park like really far away all the time. So nobody sees the inside of your car or your mm -hmm. house is a mess. So you never invite people over. Mm -hmm. uh, those are oh. masking tendencies. Uh, I don't mask. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I just all invite somebody and be like, yeah, my house is messy. I'm real sorry about that. Like if you're uncomfortable with it, then, you know, we can go somewhere else or something like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 People like, yeah, setting, you know, like setting an alarm to remind yourself to not be too fucking talkative. That's a mask. Like, is Matt, I wonder if masking oh, wow. is also lying about what's going on. You know, if you're late to work, Might and be. you, you become a compulsive liar because you just don't, you don't want to say that you have ADHD and you can't get out of bed on time or whatever, you know? Yeah. If you're always making up if you're always making excuses for yourself, maybe excuses. Yeah, there, like, there, there is, there is some of that in some people. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you do, you tend to build a, like a different facade around everything or make up stories because the stories are more acceptable than the fact that I just lost track of time and I'm late for work. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I, I, I feel like before I was medicated and diagnosed and I had no idea what was really going on with me that I would, you know, do stuff like that way more often mm. where I, you know, but then again, I also like had jobs outside my house way more often back then too. Like, can you imagine if telecommuting were a thing that like 
the the same the, the setups that we have now can you imagine if we had that back when we were younger and like just coming into the working world and we just get a telecommuting job from home because you know the to and from back you know home to work and back like that's just too much for you mm-hmm. like, i always hated the i don't commute. know <laughs> i probably would have done like had a job or two and then been like nope i'm working from home like <laughs> yeah yeah see because I-, I just don't mask it exhausts the shit out of me to be honest and um i don't most of the time i'm not masked and i just tell people really uncomfortable truths sometimes to their face i've gotten really good at mm-hmm. that um sometimes i'll feel bad about it later and apologize but like <laughs> i yeah. just i've i've kind of i've I've hit this point in my life where I don't give any more fucks. I have zero fucks in my bank account. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, this and is just I who can't I am. pay any more <laughs> than I mm-hmm. already have. So, um, I don't know. I think there are certain people out there who, you know, have had certain lives and they might be prone to this style of thinking, um, where it's like, well, fuck it, you know, like mm-hmm. if I'm, I'm going to lose anyway, so fuck it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're all getting to I mean we're we're pretty much middle age too now. Yeah. Oh, so shut that shit up right well, now. Well, I'm just saying, you know, we're running hey. out of fucks anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have like, you know, longer lon I have longevity genetics. Maybe I'm not technically middle aged. Maybe I'll be middle aged around fifty instead. Ah. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah no. All right. Yeah. We're going to delay this whole middle age thing for another 10 years just because I don't feel like admitting it right now. That's, That's right. Yeah. I'm masking this <laughs> shit right up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Surviving the 10 years out of masking. Yeah. Oh, God. You can mask about anything, couldn't you? About age. Look at all this makeup we're wearing. Holy shit. Like. <laughs> I know. If we I really don't even wear as mask. much as some people. I don't know. I think young people wear a lot of makeup these days too. But although I am wearing a lot less today than normal. <laughs> yeah, makeup I'm just is like... one literal mask that we put on for the world. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Kind of wild, Very literally. It? Yeah. Yeah. Fashion is another one. Yeah. Just, just the entire concept of fashion. Yeah. Everything it's a mask. to do with image. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I said exactly. I am yeah. the queen of masking. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> queen of masking. <laughs> Somebody hand this woman a tiara. <laughs> like <laughs> it can be yeah. fun sometimes. It can be fun to mask. See how well you do. <laughs> I just like painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so therefore, I like makeup. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Me yeah, it, it is fun. I like painting. Fun. Therefore, I like makeup. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's a paint, very much a painting kind of thing. I yeah. even have like a lot of pencil makeups where it's like, you know, in pencil form or pen form or like brush form or something like that. Cause I just love painting, you know, <laughs> I just love that you pluralized makeup. Did I? <laughs> I didn't hear that. She said makeups. Oh, I, I didn't hear that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hmm. Did I say makeups or did I say makeup? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out when Annette finally li- re-listens to this as she's editing our <laughs> our episode. And then she'll be like, oh, yeah, you really did say makeups. I'll be like, ah, well, fuck. <laughs> Damn. And that's just kind of how our conversations go. <laughs> Unmasked behind the scenes. <laughs> I love I love talking with you guys on this show because I feel like we can take the mask off together, you know, and just be Mm. real. Oh, same. I I appreciate that. Yeah, Yeah, me too. It is the best, and I think that's why everybody with ADHD or or any any form of um, uh, neuro atypical flavor spice whatever whichever whichever spice you are, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, it's always good to have a support group of friends, um, yes. whether they're on the internet from a chat room, if they're on in a Reddit group, if they're like just uh, like a Facebook group, a, AI a Twitter chat circle. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no, not AI chat, but no, no, <laughs> no, actually them. don't yeah. get therapy from AI. Somebody's already killed themselves. Um, yeah. <laughs> look it up. But it's yeah. true. It is true. 
Dinosaur. We do yeah. need a statement. I Don't know. do it. Um, we do but, need other people to support us. Yeah, we do need a group of of l- literally like minded people mm-hmm. to <laughs> to um, support us as we go through all this. Because, like, I I mean, we all had each other as friends as teenagers, and we've grown up together very much over life. And it's been one of the things that I could count on is having at least two other people <laughs> who would understand exactly where I'm coming from on any given faux pas. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, just no, knowing that felt really amazing. And I can't, I can't say enough about that, but like, you know, if you have some kind of neuro atypical spice, Mm-hmm. try for some kind of group. It doesn't matter if you don't know anyone in real life who has ADHD or autism or dyslexia, you can find support groups for that. Sometimes through counseling offices, sometimes through community centers, sometimes through social media. Um, so any, any friend is better than no friend, especially when you all have ADHD together. Um, <laughs> right. So yeah, get yourself on some kind of group and yay. Support yeah, so friends. Unmask, yes. but do no Magic harm. Wand. See, I'll 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 unmask even further <laughs> now that we're in the spirit of unmasking. Usually Ellen is the one who's high for these shows. <laughs> Ellen is just baked out of her mind every show, but today I've traded places with her and I'm the one who's baked out of my mind today. And I don't know if any of you guys have heard it in my voice, like, hey, she's, she sounds really smiley today. Hey, she Girl, can't English right like normal. And she doesn't even, she's not even multilingual. Like, <laughs> so yeah. Now I, I can tell you that when I was sitting back and going, do I think I need another hit? And then my brain was like, yeah, totally. And it was a mistake, guys. It was a mistake. Oh, um, <laughs> oh, now you know. Now Lesson I know. Learned. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm like, there. I like you this one. It's great. <laughs> too much weed and the mask slips a little too much. <laughs> a little, yep. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm probably going to regret this at some point, but that's that's okay because literally all my friends will be there to laugh about it at this point. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but surprisingly, the Kraken has not revealed itself. Oh, the, the Kraken. kraken. <laughs> yes. Surprisingly, the Kraken has not revealed itself. That's when uh, Jen drinks wine, then the Kraken comes yeah. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh God. <laughs> I know, right? I've threatened mm-hmm. to come on this show a little bit plastered before, and and I'm like, ah, maybe it's a terrible idea. It's probably a terrible <laughs> idea. I'm gonna regret it. I'm gonna regret it. <laughs> have to have a yeah. special episode for that. Yeah, I think yeah. we're I think we're gonna have to have a uh, episode where uh, either we drink or well I I have to drink you guys can't uh, like you guys can smoke pot I can't so mm-hmm. yeah but, like have have a uh, you know a, a Do it challenge ADHD yeah. yeah like ADHD trivia we should each have like some roulette. kind of obscure trivia or yeah roulette <laughs> <laughs> obscure trivia night yay. <laughs> Be good episode. And then we, oh my god, yeah, we should find some way to torture ourselves in the mm-hmm. most humiliating way, just for other people to laugh at us. Yeah, in the, we in should the do spirit, it. In the spirit of unmasking, exactly. In yep. the spirit of unmasking, here mm-hmm. are my balls on the table. I bet you didn't know We're I have put balls. All our balls um, on the table. <laughs> yep. No, at this point, I'm just messing with everybody. <laughs> Can just imagine people are like is she transgender yeah <laughs> i know right it's quite, it's quite visual i'm tall enough that i've been accused of it before <laughs> not that i find it terribly insulting because it's like oh you mean i'm living my life authentically who i am oh sure mm-hmm. like, you mm-hmm. know <laughs> like what is that it's not remotely. It's not the kind of cut some people think it is. That's nah. that's the the risk of unmasking is comments from people in public. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's always the risk you're gonna get. So you gotta have a thick skin if you want to be yourself. Oh yeah, we're on Facebook. Yep. If you're gonna be yourself and talk about your ADHD, you're gonna have people making comments. 
Oh, so, yeah. For just, for sure. But just pre- be prepared to own it. That's when you have to have the own it mentality of, yeah, yeah. you I know what, maybe my, pa- maybe my pants fell down and maybe I wasn't even wearing underwear. But you know what? I like my thighs and I've just decided that that's good enough. Like, <laughs> Perfect analogy. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <Exactly. laughs> and that face says it all, though. It's the angry school teacher look. <laughs> All right, we better wrap this shit up here. Yep. <laughs> We're this is going downhill up. very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> She's only saying that because I just mentioned her school teacher look. <laughs> uh oh. No, that's the Cruella DeVille look. Uh oh. Okay. That's the Catrill look. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that is. That's Catrill. That is branded Catrill. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, let's wrap so. this. Uh, no, I just like to sit here spluttering uncomfortably because I'm unmasking, okay? Um, <laughs> you do you, Jen. We'll just sit here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I've taken my pants off and now I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> metaphorically, I mean, of course, metaphorically speaking, we all wear pants, right? Thank right? you for listening, This everybody. is only the equivalent of a Zoom call. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no seriously though no. they, thank you for listening to us and our on our bullshit that we spew yeah. just yeah thanks we for putting up it. with our bullshit and uh we yeah. love all of you guys and of course basel tough basel tough woo <laughs>